Hello, welcome back to SabirCAD. We are all aware that AutoCAD software can be used to perform two-dimensional drafting as well as 3D modeling. But most of the users worldwide are using AutoCAD merely for 2D drafting applications. But if you are using AutoCAD only for 2D drafting application, you will be exploring only less than 20% of its total available potential. 3D modeling in AutoCAD is so powerful that it has got tremendous amount of applications. In this video, I deal with one of such application. That is creating a 2D drawing from a 3D model. Which is possible only by using certain software such as Revit architecture. You must have already learned the procedure to create 2D views from 3D models. But they are just views, not drawings. But in this video, I deal with the procedure to make 2D drawings. You must already be familiar with the procedure to create multiple views from a 3D model. And these are just views and not drawings. If you are not familiar with the procedure to create such views from a 3D model, please click on the link provided at the upper right corner as well as at the description section of this video. I will start with the simplest procedure to create 2D drawings from a 3D model. I will explain that with the help of this mechanical model. Now I will go for a front view. So just click on friend. Now you can give flat shot command. Flat shot command projects the 3D model into the view plane and a drawing is created from this projection and that drawing is inserted as a new block. So click on create and you can insert it at a convenient location. Since it's a block you can give scale factors if you want. I'll give enters because I don't want to give any scale factors or rotation angles. Now you can just orbit the view. You can see that this is nothing but a 2D projection of the front view and it is obtained as a separate drawing. Likewise, you can also create a drawing of the top view. I'll erase this. Now let's go to top. Now I'll again give flat shot command and create drawing of the top view. Now give enters. Now you can switch over to the isometric view and you can see that this drawing is created from this 3D model. Now let's consider another 3D model which is this particular residence and you can see that the 3D model of this residence is more complex than the mechanical component which we have seen before. You may visit my website sabircat.com and click on download tutorial files image on the right side and you can click on the image file of the double storied residence and you will get a download link using which uh, you can download the 3D file of the double storied residence and you can try out this tutorial. Now let's try to create the elevation drawing of this 3D model using the flat shot command. So I'll go to friend view and change the representation to hidden. Now let's give flat shot command and insert the block on this location and give enters. Now when you compare these two views, you can see that the elevation drawing which is created using the flat shot command consists of number of unwanted lines. Whereas when you consider this elevation, there is only required number of lines. The excess number of lines in the elevation which is created using the flat shot command is because of the complexity of this 3D model. How will you create perfect elevations in such a situation? I have conducted some experimentations and I came out with a tricky method to tackle the situation. We will see that next. The 3D model of this house is created in millimeters. Let's check the distance between these two endpoints. That is the height of the foundation. So I'll give dist command and select these two endpoints. You can see that it is 750 millimeters. Now I'll change the representation to wireframe and click on layout. Now you can erase this viewport. So select that viewport and give erase command. Then right click on the layout, go to page setup manager and modify and change the printer to AutoCAD PDF high quality print and choose the paper size to 
ISO A4 297 by 210 and give OK and close. Next I'll give mView command which will let you open a viewport on this paper. So I'll give mView and give an enter. Now double click inside and take a front view. You can choose a scale of 1 is to 50. Now you can give the command hide H I D E to hide this view. Next you can go for plot. So I'll give plot command. Then continue to plot a single plot. Then from what to plot section you can choose window option and you can choose the area to be plotted within a window like this. Now plot style manager you can choose monochrome and give OK and you are asked to give the file name. I'll give the file name as front elevation and save. Update the shaded plot settings in all viewports. And this is the PDF version of the front view. Now here is the trick. You can just open a new file then you go to application button, import PDF and give an enter and you can choose the file name which is friend elevation. In fact AutoCAD supports PDF import from AutoCAD 2017 version onwards. So if you want to try this procedure you should have installed 2017 or higher. Now give open and make sure that all these buttons are checked. Now you can see the paper size here as well as the scale we have given which is 1 is to 50 and give OK. Now the imported PDF file is converted as a drawing or DWG file. Now let's check this distance. I'll give dist command and you can see that it is 750.3814. That means it is 99.99% accurate. And while dimensioning, you can always truncate the decimal part by giving the decimal precision of the primary units to zero. So let's go to annotate tab and go to dimension style manager. I'll go to modify and primary units decimal precision. I'll set it at zero. Then I'll go to fit. Then I'll give an overall scale factor of 30. Now let's go for a linear dimension from here to here. And you can see that it is 750. Hence we can perform perfect dimensioning. Using this procedure, you can create any number of 2D projections from a 3D model. You know how much time and effort you have to spare to create such a drawing using AutoCAD software. Now you have saved all that. Before concluding this video, I would like to give you some additional bonus information. If you ask me which is my favorite topic in AutoCAD 2D, I'll say it is nothing but blocks. As you are all aware, blocks are the best and the easiest method to handle with repeatability in a drawing. If you take a mechanical drawing or a civil drawing or an electrical drawing, you will see certain components being repeatedly used. So where do you actually start the study of blocks? You should first make a block which is local to a drawing which is called a local block. Then you learn the technique to globalize it. Then you call that block as a global block. What exactly is the difference between a local block and a global block? A local block can be used only in a specific drawing whereas a global block can be used in any other drawing. So you should learn the technique to globalize the local block. Once a block is globalized, it will become a separate drawing. You can keep hundreds of such drawings so that these drawings can be used in any other drawing any number of times. You can organize all these drawings in a separate palette which we call as tool palettes. Then if you want, you can give some additional functionality to a block. Such blocks are called dynamic blocks. You basically create a dynamic block using a block editor. In the block editor, you create a block, then you give some parameters and actions to that particular block so that it will become dynamic. For example, if you make a door a dynamic block, you will be in a position to flip it as well as align it the way you want. And you can integrate more than one doors in a single door. For example, if you want, you can create a door and uh, you can keep a plan view of the door, elevation as well as side view of that particular door in a single door. Likewise, you can integrate blocks within blocks. In AutoCAD tool palette, when you go through, you will come across with such dynamic blocks. 
And if you want to access the tool palette, you have to hold down the control key and press the three keys simultaneously so that you will get a separate interface wherein you will come across with the dynamic blocks which comes along with the software. So I recommend everyone to learn and specialize in using blocks, different types of blocks so that you will become confident. Another interesting aspect of block is the concept of block redefinition. Once you create a block, that block will become a parent object and you can have as many copies as you want from that parent object and the parent object is called the block definition. The copies which you take on the screen are called child objects and parent child are linked. The moment you make changes on the parent, you will see these changes getting reflected on all the children. And that is exactly what you call as block redefinition. In my channel, I have incorporated all this information. You can start with a local block, then you can move on to globalize it. Then you can learn the procedure to redefine it. Then you will also learn the procedure to store it in a tool palette. Then I have also incorporated an interesting tutorial which deals with dynamic blocks. I have provided a playlist at the upper right corner of the screen. You can just make a click there and you can explore all the videos. Be confident with the beautiful concept and make the best use of blocks in a drawing. So I wish you the very best for that. That's all for now. I hope you really enjoyed watching this video and it was informative. Please hit the like button of this video if you liked it and subscribe to my channel SabirCAD if you haven't subscribed already. Thank you so much for your patience and time. Until I catch you in the next video with another interesting topic, bye bye and take care. May God bless you all.